I would like to welcome and invite to the stage my friend, uh, Dennis Wakabayashi, that is Dennis. Thank you so much. Hello, Lisbon. It's a pleasure to be back. My first visit here was last year, where I had a chance to podcast with some of you. I learned quite a bit of wonderful things about Lisbon. And today what I'd like to do is celebrate this moment in time, all of us together. We're in an era of AI and experiences that we literally can reshape the entire world away from things like aggression or, or conflict. What CX does is it creates a new kind of teamwork dynamic, a matrix of empathy, if you will. Together, there is a coherence that bonds us all. And by backstory, so for context, for the last few years, I've been going around the world exploring customer experience perspectives to find a greater understanding holistically about all of our voices together. In every instance, there were things that were important, things that each of you do that are unique to your perspective. And it led me to wonder about the perspectives around the world. What is it like to be a frontline agent? Many of us in CX don't know. What is it like to have a perception of ourselves in CX, but maybe not necessarily have a context for it? And what is AI going to do? So what, what our team did is we have been building a series of AI agents that comb the internet, go out and listen to the conversations, educational conversations, financial conversations, trouble, ratings and reviews, celebrations. And we have 19 different agents that collaborate to find a perspective that unifies all of us. And how we do that is we listen to the spaces in between the orchestra. If you think of all of our voices as a giant orchestra around the world, our system listens to the spaces in between all of your notes to identify 19 different patterns and correlate them. So I ran it before I came here just to see what I could find using the system about Portugal. And it turns out Portugal builds trust faster than any other place on earth with your customers. I don't know how you do it, but I'm here to learn that. You cut wait times by 30%. Um, uh, you, well, you earn 25% more from personalization, which in the rest of the world, it's about 10%. And I think it has to do with the way you connect trust at a high rate of speed through a culture dynamic. So I'm interested. Find me after this. Tell me. Your retailers cut wait times um, by using these digital ecosystems, WhatsApp. These things shorten the distance between your customers. And here's something that's really smart about you here. All of these things come together, and what it tells us is that you're three times better. And I ranked the top 10 GDPs of the world. You're three times better than everyone else at understanding um, uh, spending triggers. I think you know this. You're ranked seventh in the world for hospitality, but ahead of New York and Paris. So congratulations. Being the best in the world at something, particularly CX, is something you should all be proud of. I don't think any one single person of you in this crowd has created these metrics. But together, this is what you're showing the rest of the world. So I want to just celebrate that. When I talk about the future belonging to those who see it first, in my explorations, I had a chance to see the very best, both figuratively and literally, in production, beta test of experiences for the future. 
and I'd just like to share a little bit about that with you. The interesting thing about Expo City is they have, hear me out, a 600-year vision. That's, that's the kind of planning that when you're looking into the future, it's hard to comprehend. But in a short amount of time, they've built an entire city. The buildings are organized so that the wind comes through the buildings to lower the temperature. Many different things. Experience at both a macro and micro level from macroeconomics in governance and um, diplomacy all the way down to walking down the street. But some of you, beyond the, the inspiring pieces of CX, you want to know what we do to improve our businesses. And I'll just take you through this. This is a client. Our team, we advise all over the world, big brands, about how to adjust to this global economy and to extract the financial value of CX. And what you see here is, this is really how we see, we visualize CX. What you see here is the performance of this brand over time, the interest, the engagement, the awareness, the conversation on the internet. Here you can see in, when we joined this brand, this blue line, they were at the bottom, the bottom of the pack. The other lines, those are the competitors we're tracking. We told them within the first sprint, we could get them to second place. But what I knew is that red line there, had they knew what they were doing. Some other great CX mind was participating there, and I just didn't have the time to catch them. But I said we would get to second place. In September, we got them into first place, share a voice through a number of different engagement techniques across a bunch of different platforms. This is their 2023 revenue, 2024 revenue. You can see that right when we took the opportunity to engage at scale, their revenue grew. That's a 54% increase for the entire year in the last two quarters. And right there, that spike, it's 120 plus year over year revenue performance. And this brand is a global brand and on one of their product lines. So it's just something to think about. How you show up in the rest of the world has everything to do about the experience you have as a company. Um, ultimately, though, it's not about the money, at least not for me. Money is a mechanic. My colleagues, I have one here today, she'll talk to you. She's very interested in ROI and performance. And with clarity and precision, that it escapes me. But I focus on these things because it is about not just us, the executives, but our frontline agents. And so for the last couple of years, I've been working on this project. For the last year, we've been working on a platform that will scale globally, a workforce development platform that takes micro skills learning and develops it, it develops emerging markets, large groups of unemployed youth, families, puts them into a micro learning system that educates the population in a new way and connects the employers to the skill trees of the learners. It is a, it, it's fascinating to see. We launched it last week. There are already over 500 learners going through the program, being delivered to the BPO sector. It's work that we do, you do, you impact emerging markets. You lift whole entire generations of people into financial security or enlightenment. And I would encourage you, if you haven't had a chance to sit with an agent in a call center, you do that. It's amazing how many of the, of the executives I know do not do this. In fact, 
in many instances, I, when we work with clients, I say, listen, before we even start the strategy and the planning and the visioning, everyone, let's go to the call center and sit with the agents. 10 minutes, if you haven't done it, it will open your mind to just how challenging our jobs really are. With my last few minutes, I just want to share with you that we want everyone to succeed. I've shared with you some of the greatness of Portugal and Lisbon. Here's some other things that I could see. <sighs> you create relationships that matter. People trust you more. Your consumers trust you more than they trust anyone else in the world, and the other people in the world don't even trust their own people. But you're losing it at the digital scale. And, and what that means is you've mastered the economics of trust, but the speed and the scale is an opportunity for you to succeed. And probably the most ironic or inspiring thing about Portugal is you're really the best at human loyalty. This purchase culture you've created is just nothing short of astounding. But you have an opportunity to extend that um, empathetic or coherence with your customers. You have a chance to, to make that more. And I think what you'll find is when you do that, that, that act, that bravery on your part will take the work of your culture, your business, ethos into governance and out to the rest of the world so that you can improve everyone's lives. And that really leads me to my final piece, which is I'd like to thank Ladislau for having me speak to you. It's an honor to be here. Um, uh, ICXI is creating standards around the world, and if you can get involved with those standards, um, I think it will bring you closer together with us, with everyone around the world, your colleagues. Thank you very much. Dennis Wakabayashi, it's been a pleasure to be here.